Welcome to Marketplace and Authority. I'll be your host tonight. I'm Dr. Ken with Always With Me. It's hello, Pastor hello. Anthony. And we have not one, but two very special guests all the way from Texas, uh, from the United States, Prophetess Holly and Pastor Paula. They'll be joining us. But real quick before we get into all that, I want to mention this is a very, very special date and time. April's the fourth month. I believe four means spring into the destiny with new boldness and a fire that God is going to be using you now. And we're going to prove that throughout our program, even though we don't feel anointed. I think four also stands for creative works for this season. I thought it was very interesting. Today's the 16th, which means love. Nothing can be done except within love. And of course, covenant. There's a new covenant coming on you folks there with Jesus. Totally sold out for him. I thought it was very, very, very interesting that 16th time Noah's name is mentioned in Genesis 7 9. By the way, 7 and 9 is 16. There went in the ark to Noah two by two, male and female. I'm telling you this is a word for marriage because does it not speak of love and marriage? 16. So people that are believing for marriage or finding the mate, I believe this word is for you today. And of course, 18 means life. This is all next. What I want to talk about, though, is abs uh, ab the adversary. Adversity is always normal in our Christian life, but defeat is abnormal. We want to show you how to get out of the defeat, but more importantly, what do we do when we're waiting for God's promises to come back to us? This is all next on Marketplace and Authority. Don't go away. Come back. Welcome to Marketplace and Authority. Giving you hope for your bow and purposes. Breaking down the word to uncover the promises that God has for your life. Building your faith to claim those promises. Welcome back. Before the break, where we were talking about faith, uh, building our faith when we're waiting for God's promises. But Pastor, I'll go to you. Don't we don't give into the discouragement or disillusionment or temptation when the promise is happening. I know we all have dreams. It's God given. We have a certain purpose that God has called us to do. There's promises God's given us and. You know, what's taking so long? I know with David, he was supposed to be king, you know, uh, 13 years later. Uh, there's so many, like Joseph, 13 years later, he was supposed to be second to Pharaoh. You know, why does it take so long? And by the way, 13 means promise. God's hand will not be moved before the time. So Abraham learned the hard way by attempting to bring the promise with his help. I know David showed that he did not seek out to make God's promise come to pass, he had faith in God, the timing, the power to fulfill the promise that he was made. He refused to be bitter and angry, even resentful. He remained in respect of the anointed, especially when King Saul took the throne and Saul's son took the throne over him, but David still stood in faith. Step one, pastor, for you. Study the great men and women of God in the Bible. And you and I have talked about this forever. Absolutely. But study the, the field and the multiple examples that God, the, the faithfulness of the people in the Bible, to those that walked his ways despite all this adversary that they faced. In fact, we see through their lives, adversary has prepared them for the promise. What do you say? I'm so glad you brought up... Uh people that have gone before us like so we have dreams right and sometimes God shows us glimpses of what we're called to do which is we'll have a dream and a, a lot of people say like man I want to be a preacher I feel God calling me to preach to millions of people traveling around the world I've, I've heard people say I, I have dreams God is telling me I'm going to be a CEO of a fortune 500 company I'm going to have a lot of money I'm going to do all these things for the kingdom da, 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 da. and they're so excited they, they're, they're ready to, for this to happen right now 
And then time goes by, and more time goes by, and they're not preaching to billions. They're preaching to three people. Uh, they're not making millions of dollars. They're getting checks for $15, you know, That's and good. they're starting to, uh-oh, uh-oh, God, where are you at? What's going on? And then they start to doubt, why, why have I failed? Maybe that wasn't God speaking to me. Maybe this was just something, the enemy trying to confuse me with what I'm supposed to do, and they start doubting their entire life. That's it. But look at this. You brought up David. Now, David was probably around 12 or 14, somewhere around that. That's right. When the prophet Samuel came to the house and said, there's a king in your house to Jesse the father. And Jesse's like, oh, yeah, I got some good sons, you know. Uh, here's the oldest. It must be him. You know, and the prophet Samuel's like, no, that's not what God has sent me to. What? The oldest? What about the strongest? No, not him either. Or the tallest? No. The fastest, you know, all these different character traits that man's idea of what would be king. And, and Samuel the prophet is like, no, I, I, I don't understand it. These are all your sons? What's going on? And Jesse's the father's like, yeah, these are them. These are all my sons. Are you sure they're all your sons? Well, I, I got this other one. You know, maybe mm -hmm. he was a bastard child. Who knows? Who knows exactly why he wasn't on the father's first pick? You know, sometimes you feel like that where the boss is looking at other people. You're not even on the list for the promotion. That's good. Where your family's not even considering you. And you're like, but God, you've given me these great dreams. How am I not even being considered for this? Mm -hmm. But here's why a person like David was brought as king. So Jesse was like, well, I got one other son. He's in the field, all dirty with the sheep. Samuel the prophet said, bring him here. Let's see. So they brought this young kid in, 12 or 14 years old. Mm -hmm. And... The prophet Samuel's like, that's the one. And he anointed him right there. You're going to be king. Now, what did David do? Did he start going up to his brothers? Hey, you work for me. Yes. I'm the new king. He didn't go to Saul. He did none of that. What did he do? He went right back into the fields and took care of the sheep. Can you imagine hey. that? No. Declaring a, you're the president. You're the king. And they go back and scrub the toilets. That's good. Is that you in your life? Remember that if you take care of the responsibilities that you have right now and honor what the commitments that you've made and then you hold on to the dreams that God has given to you. Maybe God is speak, telling you you're going to speak to millions of people. Yes, but there are steps that you must take in the way. So do not give up those dreams. Sow into them. Think of that. Meditate on God. Is that what you want me to do? but focus on what you have at hand and take care of that business in the meantime. Well done. Step two, just a thought, is meditate on the promise of Scripture. I'll go to the prophetess. God has given us thousands of promises in his word. Mm -hmm. Actually, there's 32,000 verses, just for the record, and there's 719, there are actual promises, mm -hmm. but there could be 3,000 negative or positive, you switch them around, that could be promises. But I, I will say this, I think this is important. If we study the promises and journal them and begin to pray daily, the promises will have find our strength by faith. Prophetess, I know uh, you came a long way to be with us. What is your thought? My thought is um, about God's voice and direction. Uh, basically, not just how to activate God's voice, but um, when he calls to you in the quiet, everything is a test. Uh, but what we have to follow the most is maintain. Maintain is the word, honestly. This, the, not just the seek, but maintain. Maintain. Maintain the peace. Uh, maintain the quiet. Maintain um, friendships. And if that circle has to get smaller, it does. If the voice of God has to be more maintained in an area, it will be. And then that will continue on. Um, and so pretty soon you'll see what you have to maintain is small and then it gets larger because there's a lot of maintenance in that walk with God. And so that, that just goes to show the peace and, um, and maintaining, maintaining what he wants for your life, maintaining his voice in your life, maintaining who you are in him. That's well done. Pastor, I'll go to you. Step three, if we're keeping the five thoughts uh, one after another, focus on what God is doing in your life right now. So often we grow farsighted and we're only seeing the promises of God while we're completely missing what he's doing right now. 
Your thought. Well, my thought is that there's seed, time, mm -hmm. right. and harvest. Right. So the time, sometimes we don't want to take the time. Mm -hmm. We don't want to wait in line. Mm -hmm. We want everything fast. Mm -hmm. We want everything now. And so on the, the page of God's promises, they are eternal, and they are also going to come to pass. They're for us now. We find them in this word. We hold on to them, and then we wait. We just have to wait. And in the waiting, our, our character is formed. Our patience is formed. Um, our, our holding on to God, uh, like, like uh, Pastor Anthony said, we want it uh, to be, to be a, a president of a Fortune 500 club. But in that, that took a long time for that person to get there. It's the time that we don't want to, to spend. But it's also in the time that the thing becomes worth it. Uh, that's, I was just thinking about what you said about seed and how... You know, every year farmers plant most of their seed in faith. They bury it underground. I mean, they ha they're holding food with them. You know, they're like, uh, we're scared. Why don't we just eat that food now? But no, they plant it in faith and they sow into it. And it takes time because it's not like a microwave where that seed just springs up right off the top. We have to do things in faith. And we might not see any activity for a long time until all of a sudden those sprouts come up. So you're right. It does take time that we have to sow into things and water them. Well done. Step four, Prophet, let me come back to you. Cultivate a heart of gratefulness in every season. I thought that was very powerful. Study the promises, of course, mm. but when we are faced with the preparation of the seasons of God's promise, allowing discouragement sometimes sneaks in mm. and will grow in our heart, but we got to keep that out. The best way to do it, I believe, is journal and focus and be grateful on what mm -hmm. the promises That's are, true. wouldn't you say? Mm. I would say yes. Um, journaling. I, I love what, uh, what Pastor uh, Ken said about, Pastor Ken Smith said about um, journaling. Uh, journaling is a huge thing. Your, your, your thoughts and your focus have to stay collected. But um, I would love to go back to even what uh, Pastor uh, Anthony said about, um, about the seeds that go into the ground. Even if you don't watch the, the, the process of that, uh, God does. Because it says the watchful eyes of the Lord search the earth. They search the earth, longing to be good to those who seek him. And he knows who's first sought him. He knows. He knows everyone, and he knows everything, and he knows every season. And he knows when seasons are going to be dry, and he knows when the seasons are going to be completely moist. And in those seasons, he doesn't, he doesn't um, hold against us whenever we're grateful or feel ungrateful whenever we're discouraged or we feel so much encouragement that we just leap and we want to leap everywhere, almost to the point where we look insane. But that's not the way God works. He sees our past, present, and future, and he meets us at our future, and he always gives us everything at a time. Hmm. Well done. So step five, Pastor, let me come to you. Developing a life of worship. I thought this is very underrated. One of the most neglected daily Christian d discipline is worshiping, giving thanks. But when mm -hmm. I talk about worship, of course we put on a CD and worship, but can't we, thanksgiving as well. Are we thanking him what he gave us? Are we thanking him what he's done for our life? Is it, are we thankful for where we are at this point of our life as the promise starts to unfold? Mm -hmm. Testimonies, I think, is very good of his greatness. We should also be encouraged with the testimony of what he's done in the past to encourage us that if he promised then and it came to pass, He'll do it again. Wouldn't you agree? I totally agree. And I think that worship is uh, very much um, misunderstood. I think that people, it, Jesus said you have to worship him in spirit and in mm. truth. I think that worship, some people think it's a stance. Mm. Some people think it's a CD. Some people think it's um, so many songs or, like you said, put a CD on. But really, it's a, it's a condition of the heart. And when we worship, we know who he is. We know who we are. And from that place comes just an admiration and a, an elevation of, of who we want him to be in the moment mm. of our life at that time. And so in worship, that's how the things get aligned. Our heart gets aligned. Our spirit man gets aligned. And then we begin to realize down into the natural every day that what he's done and who he is is a promise that we can hold on to that will be fulfilled. Mm. Apostle, your thoughts? You know, that's the, the opposite. The enemy 
towards thankfulness. Amen. The enemy of that, and this is something that a lot of the, this new generation is really plagued with. The opposite of thankfulness is cynicism. And if think about that. If you're around a lot of people that are kind of negative, like, oh, that's, that's not good. Oh, that could have been better. Well, what do you think of that movie? Eh, it was all right. Oh, what was it? Eh, it was okay. Eh, it was okay. There is no, nothing growing healthily out of that. The stuff that you've been promised from God, the stuff that's not an environment for it to grow. If you're around that, you've got to change that. And the way to change that is with thankfulness. Because I'll tell you what, there is always something to be thankful for. To be thankful for God. It yeah. could be like, you know those people when things are like, you could uh, have a terrible car wreck and your, all your stuff scattered over the freeway and oh, you're miserable. One guy goes, well, at least, you know, we're not dead. You know, thank, thank God for protect, give, giving us life. And you first you just want to go, what are you talking about? Like, that's crazy. But no, it's not crazy. Think of what God has done because it could get a lot worse. You're watching this on some sort of television or, or uh you know, internet, it, it's not that bad. <laughs> like, there, it could be a lot worse. So thank God for what He's done for you so far. Because when you thank God, and when God realizes that the people are worshiping Him from being thankful, then God increases the capacity for growth. And that's what it's about. Uh, well done. So as we search and try and give more meditation these five thoughts, we find faith in growing stronger and stronger, just like David did. We're putting our trust in the hand of God that we can see the outcome of our present yes. circumstance. Yes. Let me give you a thought for this month, and I want our special guest to come in. Prophet, let me go to you. In the month of April, bring spring up into action and take authority. God is bringing a new strategy of vision mm. for his body. We need to spend more time fasting and praying and dig deep into God's word. Make sure to connect with the prophets like yourself, the apostles like Apostle Anthony, the pastors like Paul, uh, Pastor Paula. Allow them to speak into our lives. There is an acceleration that have ears to hear what God is saying through this mighty men and women of God. My question to you, grace for miracles, this is where I want to get to, is instead of Ch uh, chasing after gifts of the Spirit and try hard to produce a miracle, we simply walk in grace of the Spirit that brings powerful results. I'll stop there. Your thoughts? Yes, absolutely. Um, I'd like to add what Pastor Paula and Pastor Anthony said. Uh, Pastor Anthony said something about atmosphere and then mm -hmm. worship. Um, basically, there's something that happens whenever we're worshiping. There's something that happens whenever an atmosphere, because God chases after us, yes, but he's sensitive. Mm -hmm. And so when that happens, it says in John 14, 10, um, if you only knew what I had, you, you would, you would uh, come to me and I would, I would give you water. I would give you the living water. And so I go back to what you said about that. I go back to what you said um, and what I said about maintain. You know, it's funny because activation comes from the, comes from the root word uh, to operate, to maintain, to form. And so whenever we get the worship or the atmosphere, whenever it draws us, it draws us and it keeps drawing us and it keeps drawing us. And so that can catch on to others. And then when something is formed, you could be alone in your room and uh, for anyone out there that is, is even tr having trouble hearing God's voice, activating it, continuing to pursue God's voice in the place that they think they left off. First of all, there is no such thing as a place where you left off. You continue to grow. You know, so what I want to say is this. Uh, whenever you hear the voice of God, it could be alone in your room and you're worshiping and you're worshiping. And then you're walking down the street or you're at a restaurant and then God says, what was that? What was that last word? Worthy is the lamb. Lamb, lamb, and you'll just get a word, or you'll just get a word or a moment, a moment where your heart collided with, with, that, with that sensitivity that God was drawing with you to create that atmosphere of worship, and then you go in it. See, it's not necessarily about a voice. It's not necessarily about this or about that or about a regulation or restriction. It's about the sensitivity and the atmosphere that follows. That's well done. Instead of chasing after the gifts of the Spirit, as we mentioned before. In other words, we pray, we've wept, 
We've worked for these miracles. Because of the grace, they will simply happen. How? Look at, and Pastor, I'll go to you. At Acts 4.33, it says, For great power the apostles testified of the resurrection and the Lord Jesus. Great grace was upon them. In other words, miracles flew from them. This kind of grace enables every believer to walk in signs and wonders and miracles. It isn't because of some great anointing, and I love this word, title or position, but because of this great grace. The grace is defined as spiritual condition of one governed by the power of divine grace or proof of grace. Wouldn't you agree? I would agree. And it says that the signs followed the word. So mm. once the word was preached, the signs and wonders were just mm, there. Yes. Uh, we don't chase them. They're like fruit that comes out of our walk with God. Mm. And just as you don't tell a pear tree, an apple tree, produce. You don't stand over it and say produce. It naturally does that because it's connected like we are to the vine. It will produce. The signs and wonders will be there to confirm the word. Mm. Your thought, Apostle? Yes. I mean, we can't chase that. Um, I got some more to say on this in a minute. Come back to me because I, I want to spend the last part on exactly what that, that Well, is. this so. grace is not just a principle, and I'll bring profit in again, the faith, but a channel of heaven's, like Pastor said, ch uh, the channel of heaven's power. It opens up a gateway to the signs and wonders and miracles without any human assistant or effort. I don't think we even began to comprehend the power of this grace. We didn't even have to work or strive for this demonstration of the Spirit. Rather, we walk in this knowledge of being sons and daughters of who we have an inheritance now that we show forth in the glories of God, 1 Corinthians 1, 4, and 8. And your thought? Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, I'll go back to what I said about active, activation. Activation is to, uh, one translation is, uh, to operate, but another translation entirely is to form. Keep forming. In other words, to form, to do what you're already familiar with, basically. And uh, what I want to say is uh, Genesis 1 3, and God made light. God said, Let there be light, and there was light. That's a grace. That's a grace. He said, Let there be light, and there was. They didn't have to be light, but He said it. The Almighty said it. And when He said it, it was done. Did he worry if light was going to appear? No. The glory already manifested from his mouth into the atmosphere. Do we worry if the sun is going to come up? No. We don't worry. This, 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 it's automatic. It's trust. It's formed. And it's going to continue to form. So our trust should be that, should be in the forming, just like our walk with God. Well done. He does the deposit <laughs> of the spirit residing in us and activates that power for his glory. The grace is underestimated and God is going to demonstrate this grace without warning. We have to watch for it. So expect it to use it in ways that we've been praying for. Wouldn't you agree, Pastor? I definitely would agree. It's a, it's a season for, time, for signs and wonders. They, they need... Uh, we need to, the world needs to see the signs and wonders. The church needs to see the signs and wonders. And it's, uh, it's, it's just the timing is right. Amen. Yeah. Apostle, your thought? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. We have to, it's cool to know what season we're in. We talk a lot about growing today and planting seeds and forcing the fruit is what you said a, a minute ago. And that's so true. So many of us, we get so tired of waiting. Well, God, where's my blessings? I want them now. I'm going to go try and harvest that fruit. And what happens if you try and force a plant to bear fruit when it's not in season, when it's not fully grown yet? Is If it's a little tiny plant and you're just trying to force it, it's going to grow little fruit. Maybe they're going to be shriveled up and God's like, wait, no, don't do it. You're not in a fruiting season. Like everything comes that God makes and gives us all of nature is like this. It is, it's an ebb of ebb and flow of growing and That's fruiting. It. So we have to know you could be in a growing season and there's no fruit around, but that's not bad. It just means you grow while you're in that growing season. Stop trying to fruit when you're growing. So part of this is just self-awareness and knowing, okay, God, where do you have me in? 
Last year seemed really good. I was flowing in all these blessings and all these things are fruiting and it seems good. But now, what happened? I see I'm just constantly being pressured and stretched. You're growing and that is good. Why? If you take advantage of your growing season, because it's not as fun. It's more glamorous, the fruit, you know. You go, look at me and my fruit, you know, hanging on the tree. Like, it's cool because people can partake of the fruit and it helps other, the communities and other people. That's awesome. But if you are growing, don't grieve at God and say, why am I fruiting? You say, God, help me grow strong. I realize I am in this growing season. It doesn't mean you've done anything wrong. It's just a growing season. So you take advantage of that as best you can and say, God, okay, I'm just going to focus on you, and I'm going to grow and help me. So when it's that fruiting season again, there's going to be the biggest harvest that has ever come in my life. Take advantage of the growing season. Well done. So you don't have to earn this. That's the point. Yeah, you simply walk sorry. by faith, Romans 5, 2. If we will store up his word in our heart and walk in obedience and love with others, Zechariah 4, 6, and 7. In other words, not by my power, but my spirit. Watch as he prepares your heart to spring forth with his grace. Release what's already inside of you. Wouldn't you say, prophet? Yes, I would definitely say. Um, I love how you said preparedness. Yes. He always prepares us. Is it always the same way every time? No. No, not at all. But he always prepares us. He prepares our thoughts to think. He prepares our love and our heart uh, to give, to understand, to be quick to listen and slow to speak, and very skilled in understanding. It says that in the Word. Even strong young lions sometimes go hungry, but those who trust in the Lord, what does that mean? Trust in the Spirit of the Lord will lack no good thing. They will not lack a good thing. Well, what's a good thing? His voice. What is, his, what is a good thing in your life? And what is a good? What is good and not great? In other words, in your life, if it's not great, if it's not from God, chances are it's not God. So that needs to be reevaluated in your life, perhaps. And we were going back to discouragement. Perhaps discouragement will weed out. Perhaps you'll lose sight of the discouragement. Uh, sometimes it doesn't break. It, it, there's no warfare that needs to go into that. Sometimes you just lose sight of that, and you continue to go and grow in that. Very good. What do you think, Pastor? Um, I think that we need to go revisit gratitude a minute. Mm. I think that it's a choice, mm. and I think that Definitely we forget that. Choice. So we just go with whatever we feel at the moment. We may go with what the circumstances around, like the wreck on the freeway, but it's a choice every day. to. And, you know, we used to teach in the old days, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Well, that's a level up. So once you start being thankful... Praise is just the it next comes step. Out of that. It does wow, come out of that. Awesome. So I think that we, we need to choose. I mean, even even it's all over even in the world. Just get a journal and write ten things you're grateful for every day. You do that, your life will change. That's right. Amen. Mm. Oh, that's powerful. Amen to that. Now I want to switch gears and move into our last segment, which is Pastor's Pearls of Wisdom. Pastor, take it away and share what's on your heart this week. Wow, praise God. Um how to start this. So we've uh, it's such in line with what we've been talking about, too, is we talked about being thankful. We talked about the right season, waiting. What, is, what do we do while we're waiting for God to bless us? We've all asked God, prayed God, I need, I need help now. You know, and we go to church sometimes, and I've had a lot of people talk, we've had a lot of people talk about this, is, you know, I go to church, and the preacher man's saying, God is in control. God is, you know, works all things out for your good. And you sit there and go, yeah, I, I know that, God. But how does that help me now? Like, what do I do with that? Sure, I have faith, and I believe, you know, but I, what, what does that mean in my practical life? What do I do? How do I find my purpose? How do I find my identity? How do I know my calling? What am I supposed to do? Well, why isn't the blessing coming in? What, why can't I do this? God, you called me to be a preacher to millions but yet I can't even get a, a bus pass. I can't even afford that. You know, like, I can't go around the world. I, I, I don't have any money, you know. And so imagine this. You die and you go to heaven before God. And God says, I called you to be a preacher, to preach my word and my gospel to the nations. Why didn't you do it? What are you going to say? Well, God, 
I didn't have enough money to, to, to do that. I was waiting, and you know, if I had just got that check coming in, then I could have started that church that I was supposed to do, but no, it didn't come, blah, blah, blah. Is that an excuse? Do you think God's going to go, okay, kids, I get it, never mind, no. What's the point here? God has called you to do something, and you have a capacity to do it. There's a story that Jesus told about the parable where the guy gives uh, money, this rich guy gives money, you know, a bunch of money to one person. He goes, oh, cool, and he goes, invest it, brings back money. One guy gives a little bit of money to, and he goes, oh, this ain't enough or nothing. I better just bury it and bring it back. And guy, why didn't you use it? Your talent, your gift, why didn't you use it? So it's about what you have and how you use it with what you have. Now, a lot of us say, well, I don't have it. If I just had this, you know, when I was younger, I was like, well, when I'm older, if I'm just older, when I'm just married, then I'll be able to serve God. Then I'll be able to have a ministry when I'm older. I can't do it now. There's always an excuse why we can't do something now, and God does not want our excuses. I hear a lot of people, we talk, and they're waiting for that miracle. They're waiting for that miracle of healing, of financial breakthrough. They're waiting on these miracles, and in the meantime, they are miserable. They can't function because they say, okay, soon I'll get that healing. Soon I'll get that. I just, God, I just need this. I just need this now. I, I'll do your work when I get that. I just need to get mine. Okay? And what they're calling out, what is my purpose? You're never going to find it. Ever find your purpose if you're not doing the work of the Lord right now. If you're just trying to fix yourself before you can do the work of God. That's not how that God works. Think of the, the Pharisees and all the people that Jesus came to address. They're trying to make the outside look good. And look at how holy we are. Look at, we know our scriptures. And Jesus said, but it's not about that. Your heart is not right. So how do we find this? What do we do while we're waiting? We're saying, look, we see promotions. We see gifts. Fruit. Thing, the gifts of the Spirit we're talking about earlier. You mentioned that. And we're chasing after those gifts, chasing after that promotion, chasing after that work, that gig. It seemed, well, that's what I'm supposed to do, God. You called me to do this, to be a, a leader, to, to lead people, to promote things. I better go over there and get that gift because I see it. And we start chasing around like little busy bees trying to just go get the promotion, okay? And we're trying to do it on our own strength. And we're like, God, why isn't this working? Why aren't you blessing me in this? Why aren't you helping me? I feel sick. I need my healing. I need my money. I need my breakthrough. I need my promotion. I'm trying to get it, and I can't get it. What's wrong? And I look at the word of what your word says, and I tell these people this. I go, you know why I have so many problems? You know why you're not getting these answers? I heard a whole lot of eyes in these last 10 minutes of your conversation, why I can't get this, I need this, I need this, I need this. You're waiting on something in your life to change before you can do the work of the Lord. And that's not right. God says, come to me now. There are people out there in your community that live in your apartment building that you walk by every day at your work, at your school, at your job, that need a miracle from God. They are worse off than you are. Why aren't you pouring into those people? What's stopping you from doing that? Because here it goes. Let's hit some verses. Once you start pouring out into other people, and it could start small. It could be with like, hey, you're beautiful. Jesus loves you. It's going to be okay. You could a hug. Can I give you a hug? Something small to brighten the day of someone else. Some small type of gift for something else. And then God will expand your capacity. And we talked about living water. And I want to read some verses to you. Whoever drinketh of, ever, of water, I shall, he shall never thirst, but the water I shall give him shall become in him a well. This is John 4, 14. So wait a minute. So first you drink of this water, and then pretty soon you're uh, yourself a well coming up? That's what you have to do to pour into other people. If you're just, just get your faucet flowing a little bit. If you feel so stuck spiritually, you're trying to get these blessings and these promotions coming into you, and they're stuck at you. That's your problem. You are spiritually constipated, and you need to 
free those pipes. Start out small. Little bit of blessing in a people's life. Oh, I just prayed for someone. It was the hardest thing. I just tried. Pretty soon more water is going to come through you. And when that water starts flowing through you like an everlasting eternal well, it's starting to clear out that blockage in you. All the things that you felt ashamed of, the problems in your life will start flowing out. The healing that you need will start to come because the sickness will be flushed out of you. You will start to find your identity, your purpose in Christ, not by seeking it yourself, why you think you know, but pouring into others. So I'll leave you with this. When we are waiting on God to do something in our life, to help us promotion, to help us with the gifts. What are we doing? Are we chasing the promotion? Are we chasing the gifts with our heart? Does our heart seek the promotion on the gifts? Or are we chasing the needs? The needs around us. And if we could start to change, get the focus off of ourself and the promotion and the gifts and about me and me and my blessing and my healing and my anointing and my authority, if we could start looking at those for others, then God will start to work in our Well life. done. Let me close with this. As the prophet's purpose for your destiny, so many times we get called or asked on, is God speaking to you? And I hear this all the time. Let me start you in Proverbs. And maybe I, if I have time, I'll bring the prophet in. Proverbs 1, 2, and 7 in the Spirit-filled Bible. First verse, to know wisdom and instruction. Fifth verse, wise to hear and increase in learning. Sixth verse, the words of the wise, and you'll love this, and riddles, they're riddles. The new LT says, exploring the meaning of parables. The seventh verse is fools despise instructions. And the message, it talks about bowing down to God. We have to reverence who he is. Now, is he speaking to us? Think about it for a second. If he speaks audible, and I always hear this, I don't hear the voice audibly. Well, if he speaks all the time audibly, you don't know who God is because he speaks so many ways. He's multilingual. He can do anything. He speaks through other people, through the word, uh, circumstances, nature, you name it. I, out of 130,000 people we know, we only know a handful that get the actual audible. I've heard it a couple of times, pastors heard it a few times. Not everybody hears it. I'm not saying you're not. That doesn't mean you're off, but I know this. There's more ways, that it, I mean, if he has to talk to you audibly, he has to get your attention. You're not hearing him. That's why he has to speak audible. Second thought, Luke 10, 21. If we thank you, Father, for these things, that heaven has hidden these wise sayings and release them to babes. In other words, people that are young in the Lord, maybe that are hungry, meek, and really want to hear what it is. Second point, and this is my favorite one, Matthew 13, 10. Why am I not hearing from God? This is where it is. A lot of people believe that Jesus told parables to reveal the truth, but the disciples came right out and asked him, why do you speak in parables? And Jesus answered to them, uh, they're not, you are granted to know the mysteries of the kingdom, but they haven't been granted to. Why? For whoever has more, or whoever has it, to, they will be given much more to those that have uh, more abundance. But whoever does not have, even what little they had, will be taken away. In other words, they speak in parables because they're seeking not to seek while they're hearing or they can't hear. How many times has he talked about it in the parables? You don't have eyes to hear or you don't see what there is to see. What he's getting at here is if we don't want to know, why didn't he just, Jesus does not say anything. He does it for us. The one most common statement he always made, those who have eyes to hear, ears to hear, those hidden words are for the hungry and humble so people can find it. So the words Jesus said, the parables are to hide the truth, not from us, but for us, that's where I'm going. This is the opposite of the American churches. They want to spell everything out. But if they spell everything out and spoon feed everybody, everybody either thinks they came up with the answer or they're just not interested in it because they're not seeking any of it. They don't have to put any effort. They're weak. They're not trying to. If Jesus is coming back for a mature 
educated church, somebody that's seeking him, that really wants to know who he is. Now, here at MIA, we give an interpretation and advise many times to speak the words and what they mean. For an example, we give scripture, we only give our interpretation, and it's up to the individual to learn more, to get his revelation. That's where the 30, 60, 100-fold comes. Only 8% of the church gets 100-fold. Why? Because they go home and study what the pastor, remember the pastor, the church is there to equip you to hear a testimony or give a testimony, or if you're really paying attention, to minister to others. But after you come out of the church, where's your influence? What are you doing? Where are you getting equipped from? Are you learning from what the pastor said? Are you digging the information out for yourself? That's how he's speaking to you. Now, Jesus died on the cross for our sins, but it's to give, uh, for us to have, revel uh, to have a relationship with him. That means he has to communicate to us. So, if he's multilingual and, and there's different ways, once we master one way or another, he turns the switch and he tries something different. For an example, if he's, and I get this a lot, Isaiah 65, 24, he'll answer before we speak or we even pray to him. He's showing us, I already know what you want. Let me just give it to you now. But what he, once I get on that train thinking, well, I'll do these certain things, there's no, there's no right or wrong or set way with God. It's a pattern so we can trust them. But once we get used to one thing, he switches. Why? We have to stay hungry. We stay, have to stay humble. We have to learn how to trust him to understand what he's saying, to dig it out, to understand what he's saying. Your thought, one minute or less, and I'll close. Yes, absolutely. I love how you said about instruction, Pastor Smith. Um, basically, instruction, a lot of time instruction is generational. In other words, there are generational curses, yes, and those are broken in the name of Jesus. But there are also generational blessings. There are generational instructions, stuff that's passed down in the line. Grandmother, great-grandmother, all the way down, all the way to your mother, too, and before, and then to you. So your ears will be heightened to hear the gospel, to hear instructions, to, to hear the words, because it says that's what it says in Proverbs. The instruction of the wise will heed you. It will literally get you and grip you out of death literally and so it has to sink in and it has to go all the way to your spirit and rest there so instruction are a great way to hear god and continue on that path well i, I we're out of time now but i want to say this one last thing in closing tomorrow we're going to have a special presentation between 2 30 and 3 uh, western standard time we're bringing back the prophet and the pastor until next week or till tomorrow i'll say yeah. i'm dr ken pastor anthony Prophetess Holly, Pastor Paula, we'll see you tomorrow at Marketplace and Authority. Good night.